everybody, Claudine and I am here, and today I wanted to talk about something amazing that happened. So, Monster High actually partnered with Lady Gaga to do the Born This Way Foundation and Monster High collaboration. And so basically Lady Gaga is going to get her own doll, which is amazing. I am so like in awe, I need to get a thousand of it. I'm definitely gonna have to get the doll and I'm gonna be doing a review on it, a stop motion, whatever I can do with that doll because I love Lady Gaga and I love Monster High. So as you guys know, like I love myself some Monster High. Like I have my Monster High dolls and stuff over here and my Ever After High dolls, excuse that, but yeah. So all my dolls are like over there. And I have more Monster High dolls, of course, because I love Monster High. I've been collecting Monster High since 2010 when they began producing the dolls. It was in fifth grade, and I remember I used to draw the Monster High characters in my little notebook, and I would print out the printables that they had in the Monster High website and put them in my notebook. And that was kind of the year I realized I was gay. I realized, you know, I like guys more than I like girls. I don't really like girls, but I'm gonna force myself to because that's what society tells us to do. So I tried to play along with that, and um, then I stopped collecting Monster High for a little bit. And then I started collecting them again. I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna, not buy these dolls because they're super cool and super pretty and so I bought them and what I loved most about Monster High is that they were so detailed. They were so unique in comparison to other dolls. Let me go grab one actually. This is one of my favorite Monster High dolls. It's Claudine Wolf. So everybody knows my name is Claudina9 on YouTube and so Claudine uh, nine. <laughs> so this is Claudine. And so she's my favorite Monster High character because she's just so fierce and um, outgoing. She's just the ideal girl. I mean, she's just so creative and unique and I just absolutely love her. And so with the dolls, just look at the detailing that were so poseable so they could like move their hands and their arms and their, their um, shoulders and their heads and they had crazy wolf ears and fangs and they were so colorful and bright and just had so much detail put into them and I was like wow I really love these dolls. Um, she even has claws like that was just so cool to me. The year after I kind of made, made some friends online and that was kind of when I got into drama like I would get bullied. Um, I was still straight. I wasn't openly gay and that was actually I think it was 2011 and that was when Born This Way the song came out. And I remember hearing that song and I felt like really alive. Like I felt like I didn't have to feel so alone, kind of. Like I love that song. Going back to being reclusive and really shy. And so I was able to express myself with these Monster High dolls. So I started making YouTube videos in 2010. And that was such a, wit a great way to get out my passion and who I wanted to be. And I wasn't vulnerable enough with other people online to tell people I was gay. I wasn't able to say things that I wanted to say. I had to act like something I'm not. I wasn't, I wasn't putting myself out on the spot. And so with Monster High, I was able to do that. I was able to make stop motions and voice characters and make stories and kind of relive my life as a doll. And that was amazing to me. Even, even since I was a little kid, I've always been an advocate for people. You know, I just, I want people to feel loved. I didn't want them to feel bullied. And then when Monster High partnered up with the Kind campaign and other campaigns like that, like the Born This Way Foundation, I just felt like, you know, this is a brand for me because this brand is not for bullying. And yes, I've been rude. I've been cruel. I have been a terrible person to people. Who hasn't? We've all made mistakes, but I've always been for people. I just want people to feel like they have an advocate, like they have a voice, like they're not alone. And that's, that's just what I want people to know, that you're not alone. And even when you put yourself on the spot and become vulnerable and tell people you're gay, tell people you're this, that, or whatever it may be, you may come out as a, a certain religion, you might come out as a certain sexuality, you might come out as uh, anything. I really don't know, there's so many things that you can come out, it's not just sexuality and being gay, that's not the only thing that you can come out as. And it's just as hard to come out as anything because you feel like you're vulnerable. And that's the thing that I love about Born This Way and Monster High is that when you put your vulnerability on the spot, you get loved for it. You get all this great feedback and you get to take in what other people perceive of that and you grow stronger from it. Because when you don't allow yourself to be vulnerable and you don't allow yourself to be human or even monstrous, you really don't learn anything. You kind of don't grow and you stay at a standstill and then you become unhappy. And I think a lot of people's aspiration in life is to be happy. You know, we see Monster High and we see these characters are so happy and they're so loving, so friendly with each other. And that's like the ideal group. It's like a group of friends who just accepts each other. 
even when they're vulnerable, even when they're sad, even when they're upset, even when they're not wearing a bunch of makeup, even when they're not pretty, even when they're not skinny, even when they're not the ideal social expectation of beauty, they still love each other. And that's like something that we don't realize that we can actually do. It doesn't have to be a fairy tale. It can be real if we just put ourselves on the spot and be vulnerable and be the monster that we really are. We put on this facade for people every day and you know that's such a cliche that I, that I hear all the time it's like oh I put on a mask to like pretend I'm somebody else and you know what Marissa this isn't really a mask what we don't realize is that mask isn't just a mask it's actually a part of us it's part of our personality traits because we don't actually only have one face we have the face that we show the world and then we have the face that we feel is our true selves and when we are looking through the eye of both when we meet in the middle of that personality, we just realize that that's us. You know, we are the mask and we are the person behind it. We put up a shield, but we really don't have to because at the end of the day, people see right through our mask. And if we just become vulnerable and we allow ourselves to be human, then we become so much closer and we become so human, I guess. I mean, I just, like I said, I'm such an advocate for people being themselves. I'm such an advocate for people having a voice and not feeling alone. And I feel like a lot of us feeling alone is because we're not vulnerable enough. We don't talk to each other. We don't want to socialize because we don't want people to think bad things of us. But when we allow people to think bad things of us, we realize it's not that big of a deal. And at the end of the day, people are going to think bad things of us whether we're vulnerable or not. So we might as well just be happy, shouldn't we? So I think that my channel doesn't stand on being perfect. It doesn't stand on being flawless. Yes, I want to be professional and I want to be a great YouTuber and I want people to see me as a role model. And a lot of people do. And, you know, I, I really take that for granted because I want a lot of people to see me as a role model, but also take after that. They don't just see me as, wow, this person's really great. I just want them to also think, that person's really great, but so am I. I'm a great person too. Like, I can do this. I can be amazing in different ways. And that's that's what I love about Monster High is that each character has a freaky flaw or an individual style that's completely theirs. Like, they are just so amazing in that sense. And so they're completely rebranding this year. I don't know if I'm able to talk about that or not, but I know it's a toy fair and there's been leaked images from Mattel themselves. And so I just think that with this rebranding, you know, maybe we'll learn some new things about them, maybe not. And then with Lady Gaga partnering with Monster High, I just think that's so amazing because she's also such an advocate for being vulnerable and being yourself. And, you know, she's so out there and so liberal. She's just so creative and unique and her designs are amazing. I mean, her sister, I didn't even know that, but Natalie, her sister, actually designed some of her outfits or most of her outfits. I think maybe it's all of them. I, I really don't know exactly, but it's just so amazing. I just think that's stunning. You know, they're so close. And so I feel like Lady Gaga's a very people person. And I that's that's what I feel like I am. And that's why I love the thought of like friends like Monster High. And I have friends. It's just like I just want everybody to feel like, you know, we're all in this together. We might not like certain people, but then we also love a lot of people. And when we allow the people that we love and even the people that we hate to see us for who we really are, we just become a better version of ourselves. And I feel like that's not put out there enough. I feel like I, this needs to be said because I just want people to, you know, really feel balance in their life. Like, you don't have to shield yourself from the balance. You don't have to be afraid of being happy. You don't have to be afraid of being afraid because it's normal to be afraid and it's normal to have anxiety. And when you tell people how you really feel or you even show people how you really feel because, you know, communicating isn't just with your mouth, but I could communicate with body language. I could seem nervous. I could seem like teary. But when you allow yourself to put up this brick wall of something that you're not, you kind of shelter yourself and then you don't really learn anything and you don't really meet any new people and you don't really grow from it. So I just feel like when you're able to really put yourself out there, um, you just really learn a lot and you become a better person and you become this ideal person. And that's basically what I want to do right now. So I'm telling you guys a bunch of different stuff about me that you guys might not know. So my birth name is Matthew. And then I remember my um, name would have originally been, I think it was Freddie. I think it was, I think it was Freddie. It was Freddie or Frank. I think it was one of those. And then um, I was born in Queens, New York. And then I moved to Florida when I was about two years old. Um, 
I'm actually adopted, but uh, I love my parents. You know, I don't see my adopted parents as adopted parents. They're just my parents. You know, I love them just as much as anybody else would love their biological mom. You know, would I like to meet my biological mom? I'd love to meet her. I'd love to know more about her. However, she does suffer from schizophrenia, so I was never able to meet her because she wasn't able to raise children. Um, and my mom wasn't able to birth children, so she adopted us. And actually, five out of six of us are actually blood-related, and I'm part of that five. So my oldest brother is actually not blood-related to us, but he's still our brother. And then the rest of us are all blood-related, and so we were all adopted from the same biological mother. So we weren't like separated from birth or anything. I know that my birth dad, um, I don't know much about him. I know that he was like, he didn't even sign my birth papers. So uh, he refused to sign them or something, which, you know, in all honesty, that disappoints me. That makes me kind of sad and feel kind of unwanted. Um, you know, after finding I was adopted, I was fine with it as a little kid. I didn't think a big deal of it. But as I grow older, you know, I kind of wonder. Of course, I'm not saying I don't love my life now because I love my life now and I'm so appreciative of it. And I wouldn't want to live any other way, but I just wonder what it would be like. And I wonder what my birth mother was like. Um, I wonder if she cared. And my and my mom tells me that she did and she wanted to keep us. Okay, so I grew up and I was bullied a lot. Like, I think about it and it's like, you know, I was really happy because I was really active. Like, I ran outside every day. I was always outside with friends. I was bullied a lot. Like, I was pushed into a pollution pond, which is basically a pond where all of, like, the sewage goes to so i was literally pushed into that pond and i remember like trying to grab this girl to push her in and it was the wrong person like that wasn't the girl who pushed me in so i pulled her in and pushed her in and um you know that really got to me and then i remember i was always like beat up i was always like punched in the face or like kicked or hit somewhere and i never fought back because i'm not a fighter like i don't fight i don't plan on fighting i don't plan on learning how to fight so you know that's just who i am um i hate I absolutely hate people who are prejudiced, and I hate people who don't have an open mind. And, and I guess that's kind of closed-minded of me to think like, oh, if you don't have an open mind, I don't want to deal with you. But it's just like, I don't have time for it. I really don't like it. Um, if you're going to say things like, you know, I don't believe in being transgender, I don't believe in being gay, I don't believe in being black, I don't believe in being white, I don't believe in being Mexican, I don't believe in that religion, I don't believe in this religion, I don't believe in this faith, I don't believe in um, girls being more powerful than boys, I don't believe that girls can be stronger than boys because boys are better. Like, I don't like when people say things like that. I, it, it absolutely gets to me. I. I hate that because I think that we should all be treated as equals and I think that we should have an open mind that everybody's different regardless of any of that stuff whether you are black white or beige as Lady Gaga said um, I think that we should be treated as an individual and you know we're, we're still a part of our culture but I, that's just my personal take on it I just believe that we should be treated as individuals and that we should be treated for who we are and what we do. You know, that's kind of hard for me to say only because I get really scared about what people are going to comment when I say certain things and you know, that's me not being vulnerable and then I miss out on so much because there might be so many people that agree with me and there might be so many people that disagree but I never get to learn. So without me putting myself out on the spot, I never get to learn. I used to think I was transgender because I loved The Little Mermaid and then I found out that um, a lot of transgender people love mermaids and so I figured I was transgender because I like to do drag and I like to do makeup. And you know what, I consider myself more gender fluid. Like I can be a girl if I want to be, but I can be a guy if I want to be. And so I just see myself as me. I don't really want to label myself. I mean, I'm biologically a male. And so um, mentally, I just see myself as myself. I mean, I don't really want to say like, you know, I'm, I'm more of a girl in my mind or I'm more of a boy in my mind. I just, I see myself as myself. But biologically, yes, I'm a male. So I would consider myself a male. Like if somebody were to say, are you a boy or a girl? I would say a boy but I understand transgender people and their um, struggles. So I don't like to speak out on politics or like controversial topics because I don't want to offend anybody. So I don't generally talk about that, but that's just how I feel. And hopefully, you know, that's understandable and it made any sense. Um, something else. Uh, I feel like I can't make a lot of friends. I feel like I'm very weird. Like I'm very awkward. I tend to stay away from the group. Like. If I make a group of friends, I'll stay away from the group. And like, I expect to be invited. So like, I expect people to be like, oh my God, come back over. And then I'll come back over. But if they don't invite me back over, I'll just like leave. 
and that's the type of person. I'll just leave. Um, I don't even say bye. I'll just leave. That's who I am. <laughs> and I don't know if that's good or bad, but I definitely need to change because if I want to have friends, I need to like be more social. I love music. Sometimes I'll like dance and sing to myself. Like I'll I'll legitimately do crazy things like that. Like I'll talk to myself. Like I will legitimately like say funny voices and make myself laugh. I just think it makes me happy. It makes me like super ecstatic. I, my favorite color is green, which is very generic, but I believe that that color just really brings everything together for some reason. Like, if something's missing the color green, I feel like it's not together. I hate when people say try hard. Like, I don't understand how somebody could be a try hard. Like, what's wrong with trying? And what's wrong with, like, being hard? I, I don't know. So, hopefully you enjoyed this little tidbit video about me and understood what I was saying the whole video through. So don't forget to like this video, comment down below what you thought, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya! Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, click the subscribe button, and follow me on Instagram at Claudina9Official, add me on Snapchat at Aesthetic15, or like on Facebook at Claudina9. Check back next Saturday. See ya!